Hey guys, and welcome back to the Chicago White Sox franchise. In this episode, we will be wrapping up the 2025 season. It has been a dreadful one in the major league level. 44 and 93 to start out the final month of the season. It sure has been a bad one. Uh, we weren't even that bad last year. We got a lot worse this year, but only because we played the young guys. We traded Luis Robert. We traded Aloy Jimenez. We, we traded... Uh, Garrett Crochet so we made a lot of changes but we have the future looks bright at least I can say that with some confidence and we have plenty of time we are sit you see there were the last team it was still last place in the American League which is whatever let's just tank at this point but we have plenty of time for these prospects to grow and in the meantime we can pay free agents you know not crazy amounts but we could pay them while uh, we don't have to pay these young guys and hopefully in the next couple seasons we should be competing soon we're going up against the rockies in this one in colorado against uh, german marquez and he will be going up against dean kremer first time we'll see him on video since he came over from baltimore in that crochet deal and aloy jimenez deal as we got dean kremer and colby mayo and chuck dutzman in that deal in, after this game we will show as well um the minor league season ending and how everyone did so in the first inning it's deep to right field oscar colas goes back and makes the play up against the wall wasn't sure if he was going to make that with the three arrows lined up but he does make that play in the second inning it's dominic fletcher going to ground to a double play but look at glaber torres flashing the leather behind the back to turn that double play something that uh if i feel like if he did that in real life the ball would not end up at second base whatsoever glaber torres not the best fielder in the world but very nice play right there he goes behind the back on him to turn that one. So nice play from Glaber. No score in the second. Bottom half of the second. It's nobody on, nobody out uh, for Colorado. And that is going to be lined in the left field for a base hit. So a leadoff single from Colorado in the second. Next batter is uh, Michael Toglia. And Toglia is going to poke one in the right field. That's a base hit through the hole in the infield. So it's first and second. Nobody out here in the second as the Rockies are threatening in this one next up ezekiel tovar has got a big deal real life he's gonna find the same hole through the infield that's a base hit runner is not gonna try and test oscar colas's arm as he does have a good arm it's not usually accurate but it is good it's like 90 something bases loaded no out for the rockies and dean kramer gets a huge strikeout right there one away so he's a double play from getting out of this thing with the ninth hitter at the plate and he's gonna fly one in the shallow left kerstad is camping under it let's see if they're gonna test him with two outs they will the throw home. If it's good, they got him. It is on time, and they got him at home. An outfield assist from Heston Kerstad. He continues to shine. He's doing better at the plate, and now he's doing things in the field as well. So I am uh, in love with this kid. I, I really like him. He's going to be on this team for a while. He's going to be a big part of this franchise. If we do have success, he'll be part of it. I know that for sure. In the fourth, Gavin Sheets leads off the fourth inning with a double. So uh, we got a guy on second. Nobody out for J.D. Davis. And J.D. Davis is going to drive one into right center field. Center fielder's going back. This thing is carrying out there. But finally, the center fielder will make the play in front of the warning track. Tagging and going to third is Gavin Sheets. We got a guy on third. One out in the fourth. And it is Heston Kerstad. He usually comes through. He's going to hit one deep in the gap. This will be plenty deep enough to score the run. Center fielder goes back. He dives. Can't make the play. And it one hops off the big wall in right center. Kerstad rounding second. He goes for third. It's going to be an RBI triple for Kerstad. And now we've got a runner on third. One out yet again. One nothing. White Sox for Oscar Colas would be up next. It's a fourth triple of the season for Kerstad. One nothing White Sox. Oscar Colas looking to come through. And he'll do just that. He'll ground one up the middle. Nice play by the shortstop. Spinning throw gets Oscar Colas. But it's an RBI 2-0 White Sox. In the fifth, it's Zach Deloach. Guy we called up for Aloy Jimenez, and he goes deep to right. No doubt about it. Long home run in the right field. Solo shot. It's 3-0 White Sox. Zach Deloach. He doesn't have the worst stats in the world. Uh, he, I don't think he's going to be like a part of the starting lineup next year, but since coming over at the trade deadline, since getting called up at the trade deadline, getting called up for Aloy Jimenez, he's hit five homers, so not bad. Still in the fifth. It's Vaughn Grissom bloops on the left. The dive by the left fielder totally misses. Looking like Andrew Benintendi earlier in this franchise, if you remember. He used to dive and never make the play. But uh, that is a triple. Another triple for us. Colson Montgomery looking to drive the run in. But unfortunately, he's going to pop this one up to first in foul territory. That's not going to get the job done. So the runner is going to be on third now with two outs for Gavin Sheets. Two for two today. Hits one hard, but right at the shortstop. And Ezekiel Tovar 
puts away Gavin Sheets. Still 3-0 in the fourth. Dean Kremer in the sixth. Looking to get through six shutout innings. Zach Castellanos, though, hits one through the right side. It's a base hit. So they got first and second, two out. Zach Castellanos coming to the Rockies. Interesting. Uh, first and second, two out now. 3-1 count. Dean Kremer is going to give up a base hit up the middle. Good job by Montgomery to keep it in front with the dive and save a run. But now it's bases loaded, two out. The go-ahead runs out the play. We're going to leave Dean Kremer in. We want him to finish the sixth inning. 97th pitch of the night is ripped by Michael Toglia, but right at Oscar Colas. And Dean Kremer does finish six innings, uh, six shutout innings, I should say. Gave up seven hits, but that would be really it as we go into the ninth inning. It's still 3-0. Joe Barlow on for the save. He's 28-34 on the year. And two out, down to the last out, it's Michael Toglia. He's going to rip one, though, in the gap. This one is going to be out of here. Just gets over the wall into the Rockies' bullpen. Three to one, so we make it a little bit... In the Rockies make it a little bit interesting as Joe Barlow gives up a home run. But uh, still down to their last out, and we're up by two. Just needs to put away Ezekiel Tovar, and he'll do just that. Nice fastball on the inside corner, strikes him out. And we pick up the win in this one, so at least we go out with a... Bang, here in this last video, we, we do get a win. We're going to play one more game, but before we do that, let's show the minor league ending stats of our top prospect, Roger Magana, up first. Of course, if you guys don't, you guys, most of you guys are returning, but if not, uh, he was our uh, first round pick last year, and uh, he did pretty good. Sub four ERA, three, five, six in 28 starts. He's got good stuff, 99 mile an hour fastball, can reach 100, and he's got good pitches as well. He's going to start the year in AAA next year, might get called up. Chuck Jutzman, he came over from Baltimore. Didn't do terrible, but not great. 225 in 31 games. He hit seven homers, though, in 31 games. So definitely a guy to look out for next year as well. Only 18, but hey, if he's ready, he's ready. Noah Schultz, he grew a lot in year one. Not as much in year two. And unfortunately, uh, he tore his labrum at the end of the season. So he finished with a sub-4 ERA, but not the way you want to go out. Injured with a torn labrum. So hopefully he comes back and continues to grow after that. Grant Taylor, a guy who excelled in double-A last year. Well, he did great in triple-A this year. Sub-3 ERA. This might be a guy who makes the roster uh, right away, depending on what the moves we make in the offseason. But he's just excelled in double-A and triple-A two years in a row. So he might make the roster next year. Harper Goodwin, the Illinois Chicago kid, we're going to call him. Uh, he grew to a 64, so very good. He's only 18, still will be 19 next year, of course. But he grew to 64, so good things. Sub-4 ERA. Guy we might see in a couple years down the road, I think. Uh, it be nice to see him since he's from Illinois. Ryan Savage, if you guys remember him, he started out as a 59. He's grown to a 63, and he had a great year in AA. He'll stay there for at least another year. Ethan Salas has grown to a 79 now. He's almost touching that 80 mark. He had 270 in AAA with nine homers, 50 ribbies. Uh, is he ready for the major leagues? Yes. Uh, am I going to be a you know that person that keeps him down just for service time? Also, yes, because there's just no point if our team's going to be bad. We'll see where our team goes next year. Edgar Caro, another catching prospect. Guy we might have to trade down the line. He had a pretty decent year in AA. 255 with 14 bombs, so he might be trade bait. Same thing with this guy, Jacob Gonzalez. He's on our top uh, 50 prospect list, or top 100, whatever. I think he's in within our top in the MLB top 50, 69, B potential 22, but he's just not doing it. 225 with six homers. Another guy we might trade. We'll see how that all goes as well. Kobe Mayo, of course, he'll probably be up next year. Had a great year in AAA, but he did end the season hurt also. Turn, torn groin, so we didn't have to consider bringing him up or not. But I think next year he'll probably make the team. I don't know if he'll start with him, but eventually he'll be on it, I think. Dylan Head, guy who came over from Chicago in the Luis Robert deal. He's grown to a 69, so he's almost at a 70. He only hit 223, uh, but he was growing. His stats are growing, and he's a contact first guy, so we need him to, to hit for average, and he didn't do that this year. Samuel Zavala, another year for him, plaqued by injuries. When he did play, he hit 241 with only three homers in 57 games. This might be another guy we might just trade. We have a lot of outfield prospects. So be on the lookout in either the offseason or the trade deadline, maybe if we're competing. We're going to trade some of these guys we've shown in this uh, in this video. Anyway, last game of the season. We're going up against Texas. We've got 55 wins, going for 56, I think. Uh, Michael Lorenzen's on the mound. He actually finished not bad, 4.16 ERA. Obviously not including whatever's going to go on today. And in the first inning, it's one on two out for Adolis Garcia. And he rips one deep to left field. And this one's out of here. Two-run shot over the bullpen. It's 2-0 Texas early on. And for Adolis Garcia... 
That is home run number 32 on the year. So he'll finish with 32 unless he hits another one today. And Michael Lorenzen, who was looking to lower that ERA closer down to the sub four region. Well, that didn't do him any favors. That one's gone into second. It's first and second. Nobody out for Josh Bell, but he's Lorenzen's going to get a chopper to third. That's five, four, three, double play. Two outs, guy on third for Sam Huff. And Lorenzen will get him to hit one into right field and deep. Oscar Colas going back, but he's going to make the play on the run. And he gets out of the second, still 2 nothing in this one. In the third, it's more trouble for Michael Lorenzen. He's already thrown 72 pitches. And that's going to be a two-out walk to Marcus Simeon. They're going to load the bases for Josh Young. The one-two pitch to Josh Young is blooped in a right. Is it going to stay fair? It is just fair. Must have just hit on the line. And it's going to bounce over that short wall for a ground rule double. 4 nothing Texas. And that would be the end of the afternoon for Michael Lorenzen. He'd only go three innings. Uh, four runs through a ton of pitches did not have it in the bottom of the fourth it is colson montgomery and montgomery's gonna hit one deep the opposite field the left going back to the left fielder he's still back he's still back he stops in front of the wall leaps and he can't make the play it's a home run for colson montgomery good to see him still hitting good as in his first full season in the big leagues he's going to hit 21 homers so he's got 20 plus homers in his first full year and he's growing i think he hit the 80 overall mark at this point can't remember jake edder is in the game at this point and it's marcus simeon uh driving in a run from first as he shoots one in the gap rbi double makes it 5-1 texas we would uh jump ahead in this one it would be 7-1 at this point as texas kept pouring it on kerstad though keeps doing good things he finds the gap and that rolls all the way to the wall runner is going to score all the way from first and it's going to be an rbi double for kerstad making it 7-2 so at least he's doing good things. Our young guys really have been, have been. Yeah, that's 20 doubles. They have been good. Uh, that would be how it ends, though. We actually get one more in the quick sim. 7-3 would be the final. That would be the end of the season as we wrap up this pretty dreadful season. <laughs> Not a lot of wins, but, you know, it's like we said. Our young guys are growing. That's more important right now. Hopefully next year we can compete. So let's see how everyone did. Uh, Vaughn Grissom, he hit 267. He didn't do bad. Uh, Colson Montgomery at 21 homers, 66 rubies, 268. So not bad for a first full year in the major leagues. Not bad at all. We'll take that. Only 227 from Gavin Sheets. 18 homers, 53 rubies. The down year compared to the good things he did last year. Not great. 281 from J.D. Davis with 20 home runs. We'll take that. We like J.D. Davis. He's here for one more year. Uh, and at least until Kobe Mayo comes up. Kerstad had a great first full season in the big leagues. 268 again. 26 homers, 64 ribbies. So very, very good year for Kerstad. 26 home runs is super impressive. And he is going to be here to stay. I like him a lot. Oscar Colas is a guy who, I don't know, he could be replaced. But 250 with 16 home runs isn't terrible. He's grown to a 74. But I think if there's another corner outfielder out there, we get him. Or a guy who can play center because Dominic Fletcher. We have center fielders in the organization. That's not a problem. But Dominic Fletcher needs to go. I can't stand him anymore. Zach Deloach had seven home runs and 162 at-bats. So he did good when he got called up. But again, he'll probably be a bench bat next season. And Joey Barr did not do good ever since Max Stassi went out. Uh, he did end up coming back, Max Stassi, but there was just no point to play him. Victor Robles did good on the bench. So did Corey Lee. He wasn't terrible. Probably should have started towards the end there. Did a little bit better. 256 with four home runs. Six homers for Max Stassi, but remember he was hurt, he was hurt for like over two months. Thought he was going to be out for the season. He came back like at the last week or whatever. Uh, and Miguel Andujar just didn't get much playing time, unfortunately. We called up this guy Brian Ramos because we needed 28 men on the team, and he did okay in 18 at-bats too, but he's not a top prospect or anything like that. He was just on the 40-man. On the pitching side of things, Dean Kramer actually uh, did pretty good. He came over to us with a high 4 ERA, lowered it to a 404. Lorenzen finishes with a 4.29 after that uh, not great last game of the season. Drew Thorpe did very good in his first 111 innings in the big league. Big leagues, 3.32, so good from him, and he is growing a ton, uh, Drew Thorpe. Jake Etter, uh, he was just kind of slotted in there. Jairo Uriarte ended up not coming back because he was hurt, um, but he did not have a good year. He had like a 5 ERA also, and Chris Flexen was in there um, just because it was all messed up at the end of the season anyway. Not good. Eric Fetty was awful. He won't be on the team. I actually like Debbie Garcia in the long relief role. 4.25 is not the best, but 173 innings is pretty good. Jake Woodford, can't stand the guy. Please leave the team. He will be gone. Dwayne Underwood did good. 
He's just the guy this year that didn't get a lot of innings. Sinel Perez uh, got better. Still not a good year from him. We need a lefty in the bullpen that's actually good. Steven Wilson had a fantastic year. Remember, he had like 27 shutout innings to start the season. He did good. Ian Jabot was a great pickup. Lucas Sims is okay. We still got two more years of him. I like him, though. High hits per nine. It's all good. And uh, Joe Barlow, our closer, finished with the 3.67 ERA. Got 35 saves on the year, so not bad. He had a pretty good season. Considering we only won, like, what, like 55 games. Uh, pretty good. As you see, we'll go over the standings. The Royals won the American League Central. Twins won the wild card. Blue Jays won the East, so the Orioles didn't even finish the season division champions. We're going to go over the postseason in a second, too. But the Orioles did make the playoffs. In the West, it was the Rangers who won the division, so that last game didn't really matter. But they win the division. and uh, Or it could have. Uh, no, it didn't because the Astros won. So, no. Uh, in the wild card, it is the Astros, Orioles, and Twins, the Angels, and Rays on the outside. But by four and five games. So, they really didn't have a chance. In the National League, it's the Braves who run, won the West. Phillies make the wild card. Everyone else did not do too good. The Reds, again, have another great season. Uh, they win the Central. Brewers didn't have a bad record, but they're not going to make the wild card because two wild card teams coming from the West. The Dodgers won 115 games. My gosh, Padres 93, Dimebacks 90. Padres won 93 games, still lost the division by 22 games. It's crazy. Padres first wild card, Dimebacks, and then the Phillies in there. There's how the bracket looks right now, and we're going to jump to how it's going to look at the end. Texas and LA are the one seeds. And then we got Kansas City and Cincinnati as the two seeds. So got some good matchups there. Let's uh, fast forward and see who's won the World Series in 2025. It is the San Diego Padres beating the Texas Rangers in six games. The Padres beat Arizona. They beat the Dodgers. So the Dodgers losing to NLDS again after winning 115 games. Padres made quick work of the Reds in five games. And... Then they went on to beat Texas in six. Texas swept Baltimore. They won beat Kansas City in six. And then, of course, they lost to San Diego. So our uh, division rival, the Royals, not only did they get the two seed, they beat Toronto in the ALDS and made the ALCS. So uh, they might be a team on the rise. They got a lot of young talent and Jacob deGrom, if you remember. So that might be a problem. Let's see who was on that Padres roster who won the World Series. Fernando Tatis didn't even play. He was hurt. So Tatis wasn't even on the World Series roster when they did good. Look at Luis Robert, though. He will win a World Series. He had four home runs, 313 in the playoffs. So he was a big part of them winning the World Series. So this trade's already worked out <laughs> that we made. Uh, Hassan Kim and Machado, of course, Dylan Cease. He's a World Series champion now. So the two trades we made to them have seemed to work out. Michael King had a great postseason, it looks like. Xander Bogarts, Joe Musgrove. A couple other guys. Harrison Bader wins the World Series. Good for him. Wow, he went off in the playoffs, too. Uh, Drake, Jake Cronenworth. Looks like everyone's got some good stats here. Frankie Montas. Uh, yeah, looks like that's it. Gio Urshela wins the World Series, which is good. Jack Peterson was on this team. And former White Sox Paul DeYoung was on the team. Okay, so he didn't play in the postseason, but he wins the World Series with the Padres. So good for him. A lot of former White Sox winning there. Uh, before we end this episode, just want to show you guys the free agents we're going to be losing in the offseason. That would be Michael Lorenzen. I have no plans to sign him back. Uh, maybe. I mean, if we just need a fifth pitcher. But I got no plans to sign him back. Miguel Andujar will probably be gone. Whit Merrifield barely even play. Max Stassi will be gone as well. And Eric Fetty is very, very much gone. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the season. In the next episode, we'll do the off season. And like I said, we have a lot of young talent that we're not paying. So now would be the time to splash if the right pieces are out there. An outfield or maybe some starting pitching. We'll see. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.